Today, we are going to talk about this new plugin that Bogren Digital just released called Crim Drums. It's not a normal plugin, it's actually a virtual instrument. But after playing with it in a number of different sessions, it's pretty remarkable. One of the standout features that I'll get more into a little bit later on in this video is its ability to take MIDI and humanize it in a way that just sounds way more natural. So for all the people out there, like myself included, that don't really take the time to go in and adjust every single velocity of every drum hit, this virtual instrument literally will go in and do it for you in an intelligent way. It's one of the most natural sounding drum instruments I've heard to date, and it's Bogren Digital, so you know it sounds awesome. So in this video today, we're going to talk about how to install Bogren Digital Crim Drums on your computer, get it set up in a session, and I'm going to show you all the different features, the interface, how to connect the MIDI notes to the virtual drum instrument itself, and I'll show you what it sounds like in a finished mix. This is going to be a longer video today, but I have everything timestamped so you can jump around really quickly. Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Bobby Balo, and I'm the mixing and mastering engineer at Raytown Productions. As a thank you for your attention today, I have a free gift for you. In the description is a link to download my metal mixing cheat sheet. This cheat sheet has everything from compressor settings to my favorite go-to EQ cuts and boosts to help make all the different instrumentation in a dense rock and metal song all fit together really nicely covers everything you would ever need in a metal or rock song, and I think you'll find it super valuable. So if that sounds interesting to you, just head on over to the description and download your free copy. All right, so to install Crim Drums, you have to actually download Native Access. And you get that right from the Native Instruments website. Now the cool thing about this is you don't need to buy Contact, you just need to install the Contact Player. And that can all be done from the native access program. So after you buy Crim Drums, you just go to add serial, paste your serial here, hit enter, and then it will allow you to download the drums. So to install it, we just click install. So here they warn you, hey, you need to use contact. That's cool. It's included. It's free. Nothing to worry about. So it's installing contact player seven, which apparently I didn't even have. And now we wait. All right, it is installed. So now we just exit and we can go into Cubase and let's just scan for any new VSTs. That's gonna pull in that instrument. Found the new VST instrument, so now we should be good to go. Here is a session that I have that has a bunch of MIDI drums. So now to use Crim Drums in a session, we have to open it by adding the virtual instrument. So we're gonna to go to this VSTi panel on Cubase, or if you have another DAW you're using, you just need to load the virtual instrument. So we'll click on this, and we're going to load the contact player that we just downloaded. So remember, it made us download contact seven. That's what we're going to need to load into our VST instrument. And then inside of contact seven, we'll be able to open Crim Drums. And here is our drums. And you can see that I also am a fan of the Get Good Drums. Okay, so let's open this. Okay, so let's go over this interface. So at the very top bar, these are all settings that deal with the contact player itself. So this is your library. This is different features like saving any of the settings you have it's in this instrument. Here are some options that you can play with. Um, I don't really want to spend a lot of time going over these because... You can just read the native instruments contact player manual if you want to learn more about that. Below the contact player, we have what I would say is like the technical settings for this plugin. And honestly, you probably don't even need to get into this because they did such a good job programming this virtual instrument that there's really no need. This section right here is where all of your presets live. So if you click on this, here are all the ones that are pre-programmed and you can make your own. So once you've altered these the way you like it, you can come here and hit this little save button and enter a name for your snapshot and then it will pop in with this list. You can change the tuning if you want of the drums. I don't really see a reason for you to do that, but you're welcome to play with that. You also have a left-right panner. Here's a volume slider, okay? 
basic stuff. You guys all know this stuff. Now let's get into all the features that make this specific virtual instrument special. So below our presets, we have all these different options. In the kit view, you can sample what all the different drums sound like and choose what sounds you want for each different cymbal or shell or whatever you want. Okay, so for example, if we click on this crash, you can hear it. You can click the down arrow, and if you don't want the crash, you can just turn it off. I don't really see a reason for doing that. Maybe it'll save you some CPU. Not exactly sure, but I just leave everything on. So you'll notice that there really is only one choice for most of these, right? We have one splash, and all you can do is really turn it on or off. Now the toms do have clear and coded drum heads, which is nice to have because some people really do prefer one over the other. I tend to like clear coded drum heads more. That's my own personal preference, but at least we have options. Now the only symbol that gives you more than one option is this china. Okay, you actually have two choices of a china. Sound a little bit different. Let's go through all the symbols and hear what they sound like. Symbols sound really clear to me. I'm not noticing or picking up on any weird ringing. Um, and some drum samples I've listened to, you can hear right away, you hit a crash and it has like a really harsh ring to it. These all sound really natural and have a really nice sense of space to them. Sounds very, very usable. Let's check out the shells. So we have a snare drum. We have two choices. We have Kenny Beauty and we have Ultra Class. Both sound awesome. I really wouldn't expect less from Bogren Digital. They tend to just knock it out of the park anytime they're dealing with drums. So let's listen to the high tom. Put on the coded. So the coded drums tend to have a muted attack, in my opinion. Let's listen to this one. They sound really nicely tuned. And they do have a nice long ring to them. So if you have a part where you want to really have like a theatrical buildup of low energy, I think these will do a really nice job. Then we have three floor toms. Here's the one on the left. Okay, that was the clear head. Here's the coded. Well, I still prefer the clear head. Here's the other floor tom. Man, that one is meaty. I actually prefer the coded drum heads for these floor toms for some reason. I don't know what it is. It just sounds a little bit more raw and aggressive to me. Check out the kick drum. Awesome. So we actually have three different choices for kick drum. We have an old head. We have felt beater. And we have plastic beater. And I really think all three of those are really, really useful depending on what style of music you're using this virtual instrument with. If you need something to really cut that plastic beater, it's going to do the trick for you. I kind of like the thwack out of the old head sample. And the felt beater just to me is like a nice in-between if it starts getting too clicky and you just want to take the edge off of the kick drum a tiny bit. Now, what's interesting is that these are actually different samples. So if you program your own drums, you can actually alternate between the two kick drum samples and it's gonna give it an even more realistic feeling. Bogren Digital has programmed underneath the hood of this plugin a way to help humanize kick drum parts that are really fast. So if you come up here, you'll see that we have two more options that I didn't cover yet. This anti-machine gun feature and this auto double kick feature. Okay, they're both on by default. 
this auto double kick feature will automatically come in and automate between the two kick drums if you reach a certain speed, okay? A speed where you wouldn't normally be able to play with one foot. So you don't even have to take the time to program your MIDI so that it's realistic because this plugin will literally do it for you. And that feature where it automatically adjusts those velocity layers for you lies in this anti-machine gun feature right here. I recommend leaving it on. All right, let's check out the mixer page. And this is pretty sweet. We have access to all of the different samples that are lying under the hood of this plugin. So you see we have a kick. We have the kick sub mic. Here's one that I'm really, really excited about is the trigger kick drum sample. So when you buy this virtual instrument, you have access to three different kick drum samples just to help reinforce the drum samples in this virtual instrument. This also comes with a fader that allows you to dial in the level of that triggered sample. And then also, if you want to change the pitch, you can. And something else that they have that I really, really, really like is this ability to drag and drop a one-shot sample onto this drum instrument. So if you have a favorite kick or there's some magic sauce that you usually use to help reinforce your drums, you could just drag it right here, put it in, and then you can adjust your pitch. You can change the level, and then you also have the ability to change the polarity. So let's do that. So I'm excited about this because I actually just made a kick drum sample. And so here it is. This is a drum sample I made by punching myself really hard in my chest. And if you haven't seen that video, it's because it's coming out very soon. And when it does come out, I'll have a link to it right up here for you. Now, something else I want to point out. So not only do they give you access to each of these individual tracks of this virtual drum instrument, and they allow you to bring in your own one shots, but check this out. They also have studio effects built in. You probably would recognize some of these. This is clearly a very famous channel strip that a lot of people typically use when they mix drums. So it's like getting a free bonus plugin just for buying this virtual instrument, which is amazing. It also comes with a compressor, which might look familiar. I literally have one in my studio sitting right here. This is an 1176 style compressor. You have all the different settings that you would get. And then you even have a mix knob, which is super awesome if you want to do parallel compression on your drums. So you can really hammer down on this to get a lot of movement going and then dial it back using this mix knob. And I'll show you what that looks like in a session here in a second. They also have transient enhancer. Okay, super simple to use if you need to get a little bit more attack out of your drums or maybe you want to just bring out a little bit more length out of it. It's all right here. It's three simple knobs. And if that wasn't enough, they also have a saturation plugin. So I'm excited to show you what that sounds like. So it's pretty much like a plugin suite built into a drum instrument, which is just mind blowing. Like this is so cool. They also have reverb sends built into every single channel, right? Look at this. You go to Tom's, here are reverb sends. You go to your snare, reverb sends. You go to your kick drum, reverb sends. You go to your hi-hats, reverb sends. So you have access to both short and long reverb sounds. That's amazing. So if you want your drums to sound like they're in a cavern, turn that up. If you just want to add a little bit of ambience, turn that one up. And finally, to control the overall shape of the drum samples, they have this envelope feature here. So you turn this on with this power button. The attack is basically just a volume fader on the front end of every single sample. So it'll fade in the drums a little bit. I don't ever tend to use that. Maybe stylistically there's something about it that you might like. I don't like to use it. The hold feature tells you how long to keep the drum at max volume without doing anything else to it. The decay is basically like a fade out on the drum at the end. So if you have a short decay, you're bringing that fade in closer to that initial hit on the drum. So if you don't like the ring on the toms, you can pull this decay knob back and it basically fades out all the long ringiness out of those toms for you. So that way you don't get any buildup of low frequencies or whatever. And finally, in this bottom right corner is this option for bleed control. And this is a feature that I think more and more drum instruments are starting to incorporate into their software because this really gives it the feeling of a real drum kit. 
This is going to basically put a little bit of drum bleed into the other microphones that are in this drum instrument. So for example, if you have the bleed control on and you have the volume up on the overheads, anytime you hit the snare drum, okay, a little bit of that snare drum is now going to come out of your overheads. It's gonna be the actual sound of the overheads recording that snare drum. Same with the room. What that allows you to do is make the drums feel a little bit more alive. If you're going for a super tight, dry drum sound, you can just pull all these back and you'll be fine. Where the default settings are for all these things tend to be a really, really good starting point. If we go all the way to the overheads, you can see we have access to control the volume of every single one of those cymbals that we have in this drum instrument. So if the splash is maybe too loud in the overheads, you can just come and turn it down. How nice is that? That is not the case for the rooms. And if you look at the very top here, you see we have an option to control the panning for each one of these different elements. So they come pre-panned for the most part. Tom's already panned in drummer's perspective. You can change that just by clicking and turning these knobs. Pretty straightforward, just like every other drum plugin you've ever used. Something interesting is though, on the overheads, we actually have the ability to control the stereo width from mono all the way to fully stereo on both of these. And why would you ever want to change your overheads to be more mono? Well, sometimes when you bring them in a little bit, it gives a little bit more room for guitars on the sides of the mix. Another reason would be that if you narrow your overheads, you can actually keep your rooms as wide as possible. And then it kind of has this effect every time there's a big drum hit where the stereo image kind of grows to the outside. Um, it's something worth experimenting with. It's pretty fun. Now check this out. If we click the master fader over here, we have even more things to play with. Okay, so we have the master control over all of the reverbs. Okay, so we can control how long the decay is for the short and long reverbs in the relative amounts. We also have a parallel compression bus. And if I were to guess, I would say this is probably based off of something like an SSL VCA style bus compressor based on the release and attack timings. So if you want a huge, pumpy, powerful drum sound, just set the attack to 30, keep the release pretty quick, and that's gonna give you a punchy, big drum sound. Again, we have that mix knob so we can adjust the dry wet, and you have a gain reduction meter here if you wanna mix with your eyes for some reason. They also have tape saturation on here, so you can just go and throw the drive up and then adjust your tone, and then they have a master EQ that happens to be at like, all the best frequencies for drums. So here's all the sub for your kick. This is a great spot for like the body and punch of a snare drum. This is great for adding a little bit more width and thickness to the drums. Here's the crack of the snare drum. This is like the snap of Tom's kick drum and also snare. And then here is like that air band for your cymbals. So man, they have, literally everything covered on this. Another really cool feature is that if we go to the Grooves tab, they have built-in grooves that you can use that were programmed by Krim himself. So you can just double click on these fills. And you can just demo a bunch of cool grooves. And if you like what you hear, they give you the ability to play these back at half speed or double speed. And if you're writing a song and you just need some quick drums just to get something down, all you have to do is click right here and you can drag that MIDI right into your session. So here is that fill. Okay, I know that was a lot. What I'm gonna do now is go back to some of those grooves and we're gonna cycle through them so you can hear what these drums sound like with all the different settings now. All right, let me start by just showing you how much this anti-machine gun and auto double kick feature makes this sound incredibly realistic, okay? If I play this groove, I'm gonna turn both of these off. So it sounds pretty good right off the bat. Check it out when we have this enabled. 
you'll hear that the kick drum on those really, really fast parts have a lot more natural feel. There's a build up of the velocity. It's not just like in your face all the time. Check this out. Without. It's one of those things that is so subtle, but when you have a full song and you have a lot of these little nuanced parts in it, it's gonna make it feel so much more realistic. Man, it sounds so good to me. So bravo, Bogren Digital Team. That feature is amazing, especially with people that don't wanna go through and take the time to adjust all the little velocities of every single hit on their drums. It's like a cheat code for humanizing drums. When it's turned off, it just, you hear like the, the beaters have like this like very plasticky sound that just, I don't know, it just sounds robotic to me. Okay, here's another fill that I just want to play with this anti-machine gun feature because man, it, it just does such a good job. Okay, so here it is without it. Now specifically, listen to the snare drum on the snare roll. Okay, with this. You just feel that there's a lot more dynamics in this MIDI groove now. It's like the combination of all these little things built in this plugin that really make it stand out to me. All right, let's go back to this kit view and go through all the different presets now of this drum instrument. Here we go. I really like this preset. It's got a really nice pop to it. Love the body on that snare. Oh, this one's probably more for like an effect than anything else. Again, that one is one of those like effect style resets. So let's pretend you don't like how long that tom rings out, right? This is where you can go to mixer, go to tom two, and that's where you adjust the envelope. Okay, so you'd want to tighten up your decay and then make sure you enable the envelope. Okay, you also might want to pull back the hold a little bit so that it fades out sooner. So now when we listen, Here, it's much tighter. This is gonna give the end of that tom sound a little bit more of a natural decay now. Okay, if we want it even tighter than that, we can shorten the hold and then pull the delay back a little bit. So now you have a nice tight tom sound. 
So you can hear the snare drums have a ring to them. So if you don't like that, again, you just come back into our mixer view, go to the snare, activate our envelope, shorten our decay and hold, come back to the snare. And we're gonna need to do that for each of these samples because we have the bottom and a top snare. So now when we go to the snare, there's a nice fat tight snare drum. So if you like the ringy stuff, good news, you can keep it. If you don't, good news, you can get rid of it. So now let's go and test out what some of these different effects sound like. Okay, so I'm just gonna again play these grooves. I'll pick a different groove because you guys heard that enough, right? Let's listen to what this long reverb does. Okay, so it sounds to me like a hall reverb, okay? So that that's nice if you wanna maybe overemphasize something like in a ballad. So let's listen to each one of these individually. So here's the kick. Let's listen to what the saturation does. Subtle, but I think it's usable. Okay, here's the EQ plugin. Let's check this out. Probably want to just do a bell down here. Add a little meat to that kick drum. Let's see what this sounds like. That's all the woofiness. We don't want that. Beater. And there's that top end snap. So it's definitely a very usable EQ. I mean, this is modeled after a very famous channel strip. So let's check out this compressor. So we're starting to get some gain reduction. So it really allows you to hear the characteristic of the compressor when you have it cranked all the way like this. Then we can just back off on this ratio and then set the mix so that we get the attack from the compressor in the, in the length. But we bring back that natural punch from the kick. Kind of lifeless. Too much movement. And that sounds a lot better right there. Let's try the transient enhancer. Oh my gosh. This is like an instant punch knob. That is so crazy. And the sustain works great if you want a tighter sound, right? Let's say you don't want too much bloom on your kick. You just pull that sustain back, right? And there is a very focused click. Sounds crazy. Let's check it out on the snare. I gotta take that reverb back down. So you can hear there's a long ring on this snare, so that's when this envelope will come in handy. So we can tighten up that ring. It just gives you a nice like spank to the snare, okay? Then we pull this mix back and it should just add a little bit more power and weight to it. Without it. With it. Just fattens it up. Let's check out the saturation with this. It's subtle, but it's very usable. And then we have this amazing EQ, which we can just dial in. I don't recommend that long of a reverb. All right, let's check out this bleed control a little bit more closely because I think it's a really important feature, especially if you're tired of robotic sounding drums. Okay, so let's come over here, put on the overheads in solo. So now watch what happens when I turn the bleed control down on these snare tracks. We will no longer hear the snare in these overheads. Check it out.
Okay, we just hear the kick in toms now. Put the bleed control back up. Let's listen to that in the context of the full kit. It just really helps make the snare drum feel like a real drum kit. When you don't have that crosstalk to the other microphones, it just sounds like a bunch of samples being played in succession, okay? But when you have these little bit of bleed elements built into a, a drum instrument like this, that's when you're gonna get that natural kind of groove and it's gonna intrigue the listener and not just feel like it's being played with like a, a drum machine. And like I said earlier, they have this bleed control on all these different shells. So you can dial in if you want some going to the overheads or to the room. So let's listen to the room mics now. Okay, and if we turn up the bleed to the rooms, turn it down. So the room bleed control being separate from the overhead bleed control is really, really useful because personally for me, I like to take my room track and smash the sh out of it. And if I have too much shell in that bus, then it just makes it unusable. So this way you can smash it with a compressor or distortion or whatever you want to get that huge larger than life drum sound and then dial in the exact amount of, of shells that gets fed into those different overhead and room buses. And that's the kind of control that I need to have when I'm mixing a very big powerful song. Let's check out the master effects. Here we go. Yeah, that's definitely a VCA style bus compressor. That sounds awesome. This is the secret to getting depth in your drum mix is this right here. So go crazy with it and then pull that mix knob back and it's gonna just make these drums sound magical. Let's try this master tape. I'm excited. So to me, this tone knob sounds like it's just a low shelf uh, EQ on this circuit. So when you have it turned all the way up, it sounds like it's pulling the low energy out of the mix and then having it dialed back maybe is boosting that low shelf or something. Um, the drive sounds good. It's, nice. it's got that classic like tape crunch to it. I think a little bit of this goes a long way. Um, I'm finding that I wouldn't want to use much more than this setting on the drums because you're going to start losing the clarity and the impact of each of these drum hits. But it does help smooth out some of those transients that might jump out of the mix a little bit too much if you have a style of mixing that just has these crazy powerful drums. So think of this as a very subtle compressor effect that helps to fatten up the drums. And then finally we have this master EQ. It's probably gonna sound like an EQ. Let's just quickly check it out. What's interesting about this EQ that I noticed that I was not expecting was that I can hear it changing the EQ of the entire drum kit, which makes sense because this is the master bus, right? But I wasn't expecting it to bring out that much low energy from the room mics. So this actually has a really, really cool sound and it doesn't feel as aggressive as I thought it was gonna sound. And it's, I think adds a nice option if you wanna sculpt the tone a little bit more, let's say in a dense mix where you might be infringing on some of the like distorted guitars or something, you could come in here and I think gently sculpt around where those EQ buildups are so that your drums don't step on the toes of every other instrument in the mix.
Yeah, the, the 12K is one of my favorites on here. This thing adds a beautiful airiness to the drum kit. It's not harsh. The 2K gives the drums a little bit more of a point. So if you want more focus in the center channel, that's a, probably a great band to kind of ride up just to kind of give it a little bit more focus, but it's going to get harsh on you pretty quickly, so be careful there. I was not expecting to get excited over an EQ, but that's that's kind of a cool one. All right, so I think we should just throw this into a mix that I have and see how it holds up. So for this particular song, I actually have all the MIDI broken out into individual lanes. So if we want to use these with this virtual instrument, we basically just go to I'll put and connect it to the event input, okay? Then when we open up this drum instrument, we're actually gonna go to this little gear icon over here, and this brings up another awesome feature, which is the mapping feature of this plugin. So this is gonna help us assign whatever note this kick drum is to whatever the input signal is for this drum kit, okay? So you can assign the MIDI notes for every single one of these different instruments. So if you click on mapping preset, they have like all of the very common drum maps already out there so that it'll automatically pre-configure this virtual drum instrument to be compatible if you programmed it initially using Get Good Drums or Easy Drummer or Superior Drummer. Um, so this just makes it super, super fast. All right, so we have Floor Tom 1. So we just sign this to the contact player. Then we go to our Floor Tom. Where are our toms? Here they are. Okay, so Floor Tom 1, probably Tom 3. So we'll just hit this record button. And then we can literally just play this MIDI file. And it will send this note and automatically pick the right note. So let's do that. Okay, so it says it's actually C1. So then let's do this floor tom 2. Send this to contact. Floor tom 2 will be tom 4. Hit record. And when we hit play on this note, it'll know exactly what that note is. So watch here. There we go. C sharp 1. And you can do this for every track. Okay, so I've assigned all the notes that we have in this session. Now what we can also do is click this Velocities tab. So on the Velocities page, you can adjust how this software will read the note velocities for each drum hit. So if you want to make them all be a little bit more aggressive sounding, you can just click on the individual velocity layer and increase it. And this shape is going to make every drum hit err on the side of hitting a little bit harder than what you programmed it. If everything is hitting too hard and you want it to be a little bit more soft, maybe have a little bit more dynamics, you can click and bring this down to this shape that's gonna make all the velocity notes be a little bit quieter than what you programmed them. So you can adjust this for every single instrument by just clicking on the button or globally by just clicking on this one here. And they also have a lot of nuances between kick drums and hi-hats. So here's, here it is right out of the box. I didn't change any settings other than just choose this preset. Here we go. Sounds pretty awesome. So I'm just gonna kind of dial this into taste. Let's make this parallel compression a little bit more aggressive. So that china's a little loud, so you can just go right to the overheads. I'm gonna lower the volume of that china down. Hi-hats could probably come up a little bit, so we'll go to the hi-hat track and raise that up. And I want the hi-hats pan a little bit farther. Cool. That crashed a little loud to me, so let's bring that down. Man, it sounds really good. I'm kind of excited about this plugin. So let's see how it sounds in the mix. So 
sounds pretty good, especially since we just basically loaded in a preset. The original mix I had for these drums has snare buses with all of these different processing. I have a separate shells bus, a crush bus, and then a master drum bus. But all these other buses are basically built in to that drum instrument. So you can literally do all the processing I did in this session with the original drums in one instance of Crim Drums by Bogren Digital. So now I just wanna quickly summarize my thoughts on Crim Drums by Bogren Digital, what the positives were, what the downsides are, and if you should consider buying this plugin. First of all, I think their humanizing features that they built in under the hood of this plugin are outstanding. It's something that I can feel when I listen to MIDI that's being played back. Make the drums feel better when you program them. I think the quality of the drum sampling itself is also on another level. This is something that Bogren Digital always knocks out of the park. The drums sound super clean, punchy. There's no noticeable deficiencies in any of these samples. And they hold up by just choosing a preset and throwing it into a mix. Like I'm really impressed by that. And on top of that, you get like a whole plugin bundle built into this plugin, right? We have the channel strip, you have the saturation circuit, they have a transient enhancer, and then they have both an 1176 on every single channel. And then also what I think is probably an SSL, like VCA style bus compressor for the master channel. And on top of that, they also have some EQs that sound really musical and the magnetic tape that's also on the master channel. So you have like literally everything that's in my drum mixing workflow built into this thing. The pages are super easy to navigate and the MIDI learn feature is always a nice feature to have. And on top of that, it comes with a bunch of grooves that you can literally just click and drag into your session and just start writing music with. Pretty awesome. And the fact that they also have reverb sends for both short and long styles of reverb is just icing on the cake. So what about the downsides? There's two things that come to mind when I use this plugin. One is the lack of number of different types of drums that you can choose from. If you load up other drum libraries like Get Good Drums or Superior Drummer, you have so many more options to choose from in terms of like what type of snare you'd like to use, what type of toms, different cymbals, and so on. Here, we're limited to pretty much one choice for all the toms, but we do get the choice of if we want to use clear or coded drum heads for those toms. Snare, we had two different choices, and in the kick drum, we actually had three different choices between beaters, but we had two different kick drums, which for fast double kick parts, if you're going for a more realistic feel, sound really, really, really good. But that can't compete with some of these other sample libraries that let you choose between five and 10 different kick drums. But from all the different products I've seen from Bogren Digital, they all tend to favor a very streamlined workflow, right? They have the one knob series plugins. You just turn one knob, the volume knob up, and it gives you a guitar tone. That's all you have to worry about. Same thing applies with this. You have limited choices because it allows you just to get up and running with this virtual instrument right away without getting bogged down into all the different drum choices. Now, the number of effects that they've added, which I personally love, I feel could probably be overwhelming to someone who's new to mixing. And I could see someone overusing them and having a hard time maybe getting a really professional drum sound. But the beauty of this plugin is that those presets are so good right out of the box, there's really not a lot you'd even want to tweak anyways. So should you buy Krim drums? I would say that if you're a fan of these modern rock and metal drum libraries, this is probably a really, really good alternative. Some features in Crim Drums that I think separate it from the pack is how good the humanizing features are on this drum instrument. If you don't like taking the time to go in and change all the little velocities of every single drum hit to make it sound a little bit more realistic, then maybe Crim Drums is a no-brainer buy for you. If you write a lot of music that has really fast drums, or you just want the drums to feel a little bit more realistic, you should really check out this drum instrument. Also, the fact that it almost identically mirrors my natural drum workflow was kind of a game changer. And if you don't work with MIDI drums or you actually have live drums, 
Frim Drums also comes included with TCI files. So if you use SSD trigger, you can sample replace your live acoustic drums or help augment them with the samples from this library. And that comes included when you buy this virtual instrument. And something really cool that Bogren Digital is doing for my channel is offering everybody 10% off of their products. You just have to use coupon code RAYTOWN at checkout. I have a link to all of that in the description below. Now that coupon code unfortunately will only work on non-discounted items in their store, but hey, it's worth a shot. So what I would encourage you to do is to go check out maybe some other reviews. Definitely go to the Bogren Digital website to see all the demos that they have on their page and see if that's the kind of sound that you're going for. And again, when you're listening to other drum libraries and comparing it to Krim Drums, be sure to listen to all the subtle details in the faster paced drum hits. The song samples that use Krim Drums sound a little bit more realistic and they don't sound so programmed. I don't think I missed any features in this plugin, but if I did, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And also while you're down there, let me know what you think of this plugin in general. Do you think it sounds better than what's out there? Can you hear the differences in the humanizing feature? Let's start a conversation in the comments. I want to remind you to go and grab your free copy of my metal mixing cheat sheet. You can find a link to download that free PDF in the description as well. With that, I want to thank you so much for your time and attention today. My name is Bobby Balo, and I hope to see you in another video.